Today, we're going to cover the filter method in JavaScript. We're first going to talk about what the filter method does. Then we're going to go down to some different examples of filtering numbers, strings, objects, and some different things that are important and really helpful to know. So first things first, this filter method is a method that JavaScript gives you for free that you can use on arrays. Effectively, arrays inherit from a global array object in which that global array object will store these methods on its prototype property, which allows you to just call dot filter on any array that you create within your program. And the first thing to know about the filter method is that this is another method that takes a callback function as an argument. So it takes an argument and that argument is a function and that function determines what should be filtered into a new array. So the filter method returns a new array depending on what you pass as a callback function or depending on the logic within the function that you pass in as an argument to the filter method. And when you pass in this function, the filter method will pass each value of the array you call it on into that function. So for every value in the array that you call that filter method on, it's going to pass that into the filter function. And it's also going to pass the index of that value as well as the entire array itself. Within your callback function, if you return true in a particular iteration of that filter method, it will place that value in a new array. So in your filter function, if your logic returns true, it will place that value into a new array, which is why I think it's important to think about this as you're filtering values into a new array. So you return true if you want it to be filtered into a new array. As when we often think about filters, we think about filtering things out. So some people get confused on whether the filter method, if you return true, that filters things out. But it's actually return true if you want it to be filtered into a new array. Additionally, it returns a new array as I was talking about, and it does not mutate the original array. So let's go into some examples here. I think it will be much more clear once we do that. So let me uncomment this. So I have an array called my numbers and it's array of the numbers one through 10. And on line 13 here, I define a function. The function is called get numbers greater than four. It takes a value in index and an array. It counsel logs the value index and array just so we can see what's going on on each iteration of this filter method. And then I return value is greater than four. This is a comparison here. It compares, okay, if the value is greater than four, return true. If it is not greater than four, then return false. So this is effectively going to filter values greater than four into a new array. And then on line 18, I define a variable called numbers greater than four. And I set it equal to calling the filter method on this my numbers array and I'm passing in my callback function as an argument to this filter method. And then if I run this here, we're going to see that on each iteration of this filter method, we are passed the value, the index, and the entire array itself. So as you can see in my array here, I have the values 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, on the first iteration of this filter method, I am passed the value of one, the index of zero, and then my entire array. And then on the second iteration, I'm passed the value of two, the index of one, and my entire array. So this allows you to use the entire array, the index of a value, the value itself to determine your criteria on what should be filtered into a new array, which can be helpful at different points in time. So that gives us an idea of how this is filtering things. Now let's actually log out the original array as well as my new array here. And I'm going to not cancel out each iteration anymore. We are just gonna cancel out the return value. So as we can see here, the value of my numbers does not change. This is my original array. This is not changed. It's not mutated. However, in my numbers greater than four array, you can see that now my values are only numbers that are greater than four because my logic in my get numbers greater than four function 
returns true for numbers that are greater than four. So that filters those values into a brand new array. Now, you can also do this very same thing with an inline function. It doesn't have to be a function declaration like you see here. You can define the function inline. And I would say for more simple logic, this tends to be the, the route that most people go. They just pass an inline function here. So I call dot filter. And then here I define a inline anonymous function in which I only accept the value here in JavaScript. Even if a function is passed multiple arguments, you don't necessarily have to accept all those arguments as parameters and you can still call that function. So here the filter method is still calling this inline function with value index and array, but I'm only accepting the first parameter. So I'm only accepting the value argument. So here, in this anonymous single line inline function, it basically inserts the return keyword right here. And then I return if the value is greater than four. So this is going to do the same thing. If that's true, it's going to create my numbers greater than four array. And if we log that out here, you see, we get the same result with an inline function compared to our function declaration. So that is a rundown on filtering numbers. Now you can do the very same, same thing when you go to filter different data types. This works on a variety of da data types. The main thing that's going to change is the logic within your function. So let me do the same thing here, filtering numbers. So here I'm calling dot filter on my my strings array, which my my strings array contains a few different programming languages. And here I pass an inline function that just accepts the value. And then I call value dot includes the string S. So this should only include programming languages within my my strings array that includes the value of S. I want that I want to filter my programming languages that contain an S into my new array called contains an S. So if I run this here and let me clear my console first, but if I run this here, you can see I only get the value of Rust because it's the only value that contains a lowercase s. Now, one thing that is sometimes useful is if you don't care about case, you can call the to lowercase function and then you can chain on dot includes s and we'll see we get, now we get JavaScript and Rust within my contains an s array because it will lowercase this s right here or it will lowercase the entire javascript string here so it now contains a lowercase s and you might also be able to pass a regex into this and ignore case with that but i find this method to be just as easy so moving on from that let's discuss filtering objects so i'll comment out my string example here and then here we'll look at objects so I have a my objects array in which each object has a name, which is a string, and then an age, which is a number. As you can see there, and then I define a variable called in 20s, and I assign that to calling my objects dot filter. I accept the value in an inline function here, and this can definitely be done with a function declaration, but I say if the value dot age is greater than or equal to 20 and the value dot age is less than 30 return true else if i don't short circuit here and return true and i hit this line i know that this condition is not true so i can just return false so this is effectively going to return true if their age is in the 20s else it's going to return false and then if i log this out here you're going to see that i get sarah who is 24 and then Noah that is 28. So it effectively filters out these objects for individuals in their twenties. So here you can see that when filtering objects, you're effectively doing the same thing in which you return true. If you want to filter that value into a new array, you just have to make sure that you are using that dot syntax and accessing the correct values to do your logic within that filter callback function. So the filter function here 
It takes a callback function to determine what should be filtered into a new array. It creates a brand new array. It does not mutate the original array. For every iteration of your function, it is going to pass every value of the array that you call it on, the index of that value, and the entire array itself. If you return true within your callback function, it will place that value into a new array. It will filter that value into a new array. But if you return false, it will ignore that value. It will not place it into the new array. Okay, so that is the JavaScript filter method.